Hello Sharks, this is Mr. O with Shark Science Flip Notes on Plate Tectonics. It's either good afternoon or good evening, depends on when you're watching these notes. This one's going to be a whole lot less weird because you're not in class watching a video while I'm standing there watching you watch the video of me. Some things to keep in mind while you watch Flip Notes. You can pause the video, which is awesome when trying to fill out your notes because I tend to talk fast. So pause the video as needed to help keep up with the notes and make sure you get the right information in there. As I go and talk about different things, please write down any questions you have. You can even be lazy and put marks on your notes, little asterisks that say you want to talk about that when you get to class. And please watch the entire video from beginning until end. The information and the examples I give will better help you understand the material and there's also things near the end of the notes if you're not listening to the whole thing you might miss out. By the end you need to have your notes completed. Any questions you have please have them written down or marked so when you're in class and you when I ask about questions on notes you don't have any questions but I know you really do so please have them marked down. So let's get started. This unit starts with tectonic plates. Tectonic plates are huge slabs of rock that cover the entire surface of the earth. Literally, they're huge. They're bigger than continents. They cover the entire earth like puzzle pieces. They're not glued together, but they're forced together with the pressures inside the earth. They are constantly moving, just like a ship is moving on sea. Because, you know, the lithosphere, or tectonic plates, is floating on top of the asthenosphere. So you have solid rock floating on liquid rock, just like a boat floats on water. Here's a picture of tectonic plates. As you can tell, the plates are far bigger than the, the continents for the most part. There are some exceptions, however, most of the plates are much bigger than continents. So these pieces are huge slabs of rock. The next definition in your notes is plate boundaries, which is the world's easiest definition. It's where two tectonic plates meet. This picture shows the different plates in color. Now the plates, unlike state maps, our actual boundaries, meaning where one plate ends and another plate begins. So where the two colors meet is a plate boundary. And we'll talk more about the arrows as we go. And what causes plate movement is the third thing on your notes. This is a review from layers of the earth unit. It's the convection currents within the mantle. When that hot air rises and that cool air falls within a liquid, especially in the mantle as shown here, it will move the plates that float above it. Remember, the mantle is liquid rock and that plates are solid rock so as the liquids moving it can move the rocks on top of it which is plate movement before we go any further you need to know that the two type of tectonic plates in the world there's only two first is oceanic it means what it says it's in the ocean meaning underwater so under the water the plate under the water is oceanic plates the second is continental. Just like oceanic, it means what it says. It's continental, meaning it's on land or on a continent. Well, let me say that oceanic is far more common than a continental plate. More ocean than land. There are three type of plate boundaries that are big in this unit. There's divergent, do not confuse it with the movie. Convergent, which is the most confusing because there's two types, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit and transform. You need to know the three types of plate boundaries and in this unit you need to know what makes them each unique or different from one another. Unique being special. There are differences of what makes them unique so we will focus on three major differences. Movement, what they do to the crust, and what landforms they create. So let's start with plate movement. Near the bottom of your notes you'll see this chart which is the plate movement chart. You're going to be drawing arrows in the boxes on the right column. Just keep in mind that each arrow is an actual plate. It's not just a little arrow. So those arrows represent large plates as discussed earlier. So divergent are two plates pushing away from each other. I always say dive away. Convergent, there's two different types. There's convergent collision. As shown by the arrows, it's two arrows as if they're heading on and going to collide. Hence convergent collision. Now, convergent subduction is just like convergent collision. However, after they hit head-on, one plate will fall below the other plate. That's why I drew with the yellow arrow. That's what makes them different. They both hit head-on. However, in convergent subduction, because it subducts, means it goes under, 
one will go under the other. That's always the older or denser plate. And the last is transform. And transform is just like a road. They run parallel. They don't run into each other. They don't dive away from each other. They kind of scrape and slide past each other. And we'll talk more about that. And I'll use this picture next to help describe what I'm saying. And the picture on the left is divergent. As you can see, there's two plates. And those plates are pushing away from each other. And shown in the picture, the lithosphere is there. And those are the plates. And then the asthenosphere, the magma is coming up to fill in that gap that's separating. In the middle plate, in the middle picture, there's convergent boundaries. Where those plates are coming together. And you can see the one on the right, after it hits, sinks below the one on the left and goes into the asthenosphere. And then the last one is transformed. Just like I said, a road, they actually slide next to each other. They scrape and pass, but they don't actually collide or dive away. So the first thing you need to know is the different movements. The second thing you need to know is the plate boundaries effect on the crust. This is the chart on the bottom section of your first page of notes. Each boundary will be unique on what it does to the crust and also not just the crust, the lithosphere itself. Divergent because they dive away. When they separate, magma from the asthenosphere will fill in the gap that's in the spot where they separated. When that magma hits water underwater or air if it's on land, new crust will form when that magma cools. Convergent, when those two collide, either one goes underneath the other or one just crumbles underneath the other, old crust is destroyed. And with transform, when they slide past each other, it's neither created nor destroyed. So it makes a difference. One makes crust, which is divergent. One destroys crust, convergent. And one doesn't do either of those things, which is transform. On the top of your second page of notes is the landforms created by each boundary. This is one of those memorization things. You just need to memorize what landforms are created at which boundary. And you can tell in this table that I, can, I switched out convergent to be in convergent collision and convergent subduction because they will have special things that are made at each boundary. With divergent boundaries, you have mid-ocean ridges, underwater mountains, which happen underwater, and mid-ocean ridges have to happen in the ocean, obviously, and rift valleys, which can happen on land or underwater. Now, not all those are made every time at every divergent boundary, but those are the things that can be made at divergent boundaries. Also, volcanoes are on there. Convergent collision only has one thing, which is nice, which is mountains, and mountains found on land. But don't be mistaken, it's not every form of mountain is a convergent collision boundary, meaning the Appalachian Mountains in Western Carolina are not a convergent collision set of mountains. We'll talk more about that later. Convergent subduction, you have three things that are able to be made there. Not all happen at once, but are able to be made. Deep ocean trenches. You can also have coastal mountains, which are found on the coast, where land and oceans meet. And then also known as island arcs. Now, not every island is an island arc, and we'll talk more about that later. And then transform boundaries, you have what's made as fault lines. And I also put down earthquakes, even though landforms and earthquakes are not the same thing. However, on a test, if you wrote down earthquakes for a landform created by a transform boundary, that would not be wrong. So keep that in mind. Earthquakes are caused by fault lines, but that's the most important thing to know about a transform boundary. On your notes, I told you that convergent is the most confusing part. And just to show why it's confusing, you have two different types, and you have to know the similarities and differences between them. Convergent collision and convergence subduction, I'll talk about, then I'll talk about what's in common after an uh, after talking about each of those. Convergent collision, first you have to have two continental plates only, meaning two land plates. If it's not two land plates, it's not convergent collision. And they only create mountains on land. Now if you look over to convergent subduction, you have one of two different things going to happen. You can have a land ocean plate, a continental oceanic, or two ocean plates coming together. So if it's an ocean boundary, it has to be a convergent subduction. And then also, they also form deep ocean trenches, coastal mountains, and island arcs. If you look at the mountains compared to the three things made at convergence subduction, it's clearly different what they make. But what they do have in common, they're both convergent, hence convergent collision, convergent subduction, and they both destroy old crust. I know it's confusing. If you're still confused, please write on your notes that you want to ask me a question. Say, Mr. O, I'm still not sure about this. The last thing up is earthquakes. Now, you need to know three things about earthquakes. 
two are going to be on your notes. It says who studies earthquakes and then the three types of seismic waves. Seismic is really important with understanding earthquakes. The person who studies earthquakes is called a seismologist. A person, seismologist is a person who studies seismic waves. And any earthquake is made by seismic waves. So if you see seismic wave, it means earthquake waves. Do not tell me that an earthquake guy studies earthquake waves. Secondly, you have three types of seismic waves. P waves, I know, funny, ha ha, which are primary, which are the first. S waves, which are secondary, which are the second. And then surface waves are the, the waves you see at the result of the earthquake. These are the three types of waves. We'll talk more about that, but they study a seismograph. So a seismologist uses a seismograph to study seismic waves. Hence why all those three words go together. And at the end of your notes, it says the rate of plate movement. Now, if you pass fifth grade science, and you did force in motion, you should know what rate means mo movement or the movement over time. And the plates move centimeters to an inch per year, which doesn't seem like a lot, but considering the size of those plates, it is a lot. Now on a test, anything over an inch is wrong. So that's the thing to keep in mind. Anything centimeters to an inch is right. At the bottom of your notes, I want you to write down that the Sharks are the best science team at Martin. So the Sharks are the best science team. Please put that at the bottom of your notes. That will let me know that you finished these notes in entirety. And I look forward to our discussion tomorrow in class. Have a good night.